We're gonna make two awesome pasta salads today. Let's go over all the ingredients for the first one. We'll do one at a time so there's nothing confusing about that. Coming up right now. All right, guys, I always like to go over the ingredients with you. Pasta salads are easy. We're making two today. I just wanted to do one first. I have fasili here. You can use any pasta you like. I've got a pint of cherry tomatoes or grape tomatoes. Doesn't matter, guys. Same thing. Just get what's good and fresh to you. A uh, dry pint is about 12 ounces. I use kalamata here, but if you can find Gaeta olives, I would use those because I think they're a little bit better. Quarter cup of Capers we're going to use. I've rinsed to remove some of the salt. Uh, along those lines with salty, we have a half a pound of salami. I got it sliced about a quarter inch thick, maybe six millimeters thick. I just chopped it into little bite-sized pieces, which I think is nice. If you can't do that, you can't get to the deli counter, just uh, buy it, you know, buy it pre-sliced and slice it up, you know, chop it up, it'll be fine. Mozzarella balls, we have about a half a pound. For the vinaigrette, we're gonna have three quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil, half a cup of red wine vinegar. I think that's a good combination. Two teaspoons of dried oregano, a little bit of hot red pepper, two teaspoons of Dijon mustard. The recipe has about a half cup of fresh parsley, but I don't have enough right now, so I'm using a little less. And we got two basically cloves of garlic that were grated. It's gonna be really nice, gonna make the dressing like really potent. And then I have a quarter cup of Pecorino Romano cheese. I think that's it, maybe a little salt and pepper here. Get your pasta boiling because this recipe comes together in no time. All right, mix up the dressing. I'm just gonna put it all in here and I'm going to use my trusty immersion blender. If you don't have one of these, you can put this in a blender or you can just whisk it by hand. I'm using extra virgin olive oil, but feel free to use regular olive oil. You know, guys, if you don't make enough dressing, just add some more oil to it. What happens is the pasta salad, you leave it overnight, it will, the pasta itself will absorb a lot of it. So you might have to make a little bit more. I love red wine vinegar. I recommend you buy it by the by the gallon, like I do, because you're using it all summer long. You're using it in everything. I use it in dishes. You know, you buy those little little bottles, and it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I used it in in a week, and they charge you three dollars for those bottles when you could buy the big gallon one. It's in the supermarket on the bottom shelf. You buy that one, and it tastes the same. You know, there's like supposedly premium red wine vinegar. I, I don't notice a difference. Here's a quarter cup of the Pecorino Romano. Gonna do about a quarter teaspoon of hot red pepper. If you like a lot, use it. But you know, if you're bringing this to a barbecue or whatnot, probably there's gonna be some people there who are like, you know, they're, they're the people where you put like a pinch of the pepper on. They're like, whoa, whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> you know, two teaspoons of dried oregano. You could probably even do three here. Dried oregano is so important to basically to any of these vinaigrettes, to anything Italian American, to anything from New York. It's very rare to not see a dressing made with it. It's just, it's it's everywhere. And, and it really does signal more of that type of food than it does Italian food. Chicken and potatoes, chicken Vesuvio. It's just, it's the dried oregano is on a lot of things and it's good. Here's the garlic, Dijon mustard. That's about two teaspoons. All right, just get this thing all the way in. I didn't put the parsley in, I'll put that in at the end because if I stick it in here now, it's just gonna blend it and it's gonna turn the vinaigrette completely green, which wouldn't be a problem if you wanna do that. All right, so there it is right there. There's that consistency. Oh man, that is so good. The pecorino, the blast of flavor from the red wine vinegar. All right guys, I'm boiling the pasta over there. I've shown you how to boil pasta about a million times. Uh, two tablespoons kosher salt. I use more than kosher salt, not diamond. Okay, so it's about this consistency here, which is not much different than regular salt. So on Morton's website, they have a calculator that will show you uh, the difference. It's very close to regular salt. You don't have to, you know, people in the comments were saying like, oh, it's w way less salty. That's not the case for Morton's. And Morton's is the one that's sold in pretty much every store in New York, okay? New Jersey, everything locally. Diamond Crystal one, which I think Serious Eats maybe started talking about this years ago. It's great, but it's much, much coarser. So if you are using that one, which won't be as easy to find anyway, um, if you live around here, 
if you're using that one, you will need to use uh, a good amount more salt. So the, on their website too, they tell you the, the equivalent amounts of it. Okay. All right, so we're just gonna dump everything in here, guys. You can put the dressing on first, you can put it on last. This is just simple, simple cooking, but we're using great ingredients here. We're not using canned olives. We're using high quality olives. We're using high quality mozzarella. You know, the dressing, everything's high quality. I'm gonna put in half of the dressing here. We'll probably need most of it, but we'll start with half. The parsley as well. All right, let's mix this together really well. And then we're gonna move right into making the second one. We'll have the taste tester try both of these. Actually, I don't know if the taste tester is gonna be here today because I'm making this very early in the day. We might have to bring in taste tester number two. Mm. I'm gonna add most of the dressing here. I'll save a little bit of it and I'm gonna use the same exact container to make our next dressing. Yeah, let's get it all on. So I wanna talk about today's sponsor, Javi. Even though I look like I have a ton of energy, I definitely need a pick-me-up. But I'm in the middle of filming, so I can't really go out and get a cup, and I don't feel like wasting time to brew one. Javi makes it so easy for me to make a quick cup, hot or iced, whenever I need it. To make it, I just add a few teaspoons of Javi's coffee concentrate. Personally, I'm loving the caramel one. It's been my go-to for the past week. Add some water, some ice, splash of cream, give it a quick stir, and that's really it. No drive-through, no leaving the house. And I don't really leave the house too often. I'm either here filming or editing. And it tastes phenomenal. It's really, really good. If you guys also want delicious and convenient coffee, use the link in the description to get 25% off your order using my code. And a big thanks to Javi for sponsoring today's video and helping me power through the day. Let's make the other one. The other one is really simple. There's not many ingredients in here. Before I talk about these ingredients, the dressing is basically the same thing, and don't worry, I'll tell you everything as we make it. It just omits the Pecorino Romano. For this one, I think it's really good with bow ties. Farfalle right there, farfalle. They're the big ones, the big bow ties. You could use the small ones, but this is like a big pasta in here, big spinach, gorgonzola flavor. We have a pound of spinach, fresh baby spinach. I got some parsley too. I have a half a pound of gorgonzola. It's a lot of gorgonzola. You might be asking yourself, what kind of combination is this? Just trust me on this, just humor me. You're gonna love this one. Let's make the dressing and let's get this one boiling too. Just cook it al dente again. And we're gonna rinse this one off too, but not till it's not till it's really cold, till it's just a little bit of little warm. We wanna wilt that spinach just a bit. All right, guys, let's make the dressing so easy. It's almost the I think it's almost the exact same ingredients except for the pecorino romano. We'll give it a taste, but I know it's gonna be great. So I drained the pasta, it's not totally cold. If you have a bigger bowl than this, it would be better. You really wanna drain that as best you can because the spinach will have a lot of water in it. Doesn't take a lot to uh, wilt spinach, but we want some of that freshness. We don't want it to kill it. Like we don't want to take the spinach and put it in the microwave for even for 30 seconds. We don't want to put it in a pan. That's the beauty of this dish. And this was like, this is a beautiful pasta. And they used to serve it in these huge platters and you just want to eat it. If you're into spinach and, and the gorgonzola. Here's our parsley. Ideally you have more parsley, um, especially for the other one because the parsley makes it look bright, makes it look nice. And I'm just gonna start mixing it as best I can. So it'll, everything in here, as big as it looks now, is gonna reduce a lot in, in volume. Spinach will get smaller. I forgot the cheese and it was right in front of me. I love the cheese, love it. Just a combination of the gorgonzola and spinach with this pasta that's like kind of firm bow tie and the, the amazing vinaigrette. And I'm gonna use the rest of the dressing.
All right, guys, we're gonna let these both mellow out a little bit for a while. I have more of the blue cheese here. It was cold for a half a pound. I think I had a little bit more there. We'll let these sit for a bit and then we'll bring the taste tester in or some other taste tester. Why did James not be in the, is not in this one? Well, he doesn't like gorgonzola yeah. and that's like the main flavor in this one. Yeah. And he's just not really like a fan of pasta salad. So we didn't yeah. think he yeah. would be a really he like, can't unbiased be, judge. Yeah, he can't be unbiased. He hates gorgonzola. He would give this a zero. <laughs> so I need somebody who at least likes all the flavors I love in here. gorgonzola, so okay. I am. Well, you're biased too then. Well, maybe I am, but okay. <laughs> Try them out, see what you think. Okay. Do you care which one I take first or? No. Okay. I already ate a bunch of both of these, so I'm kind of stuck. All right, I'm gonna eat this one first because I feel like the salami in that one might be a little powerful. What do you think? It's really good. I personally would add even more gorgonzola to it. I have more, it's on the side. Okay. Guys, the recipe calls for a half pound. I didn't put it all in right now. My wife helps me all the time. She mm -hmm. goes, gets a lot of the groceries yeah. for me. I didn't know if you bought like two half pound containers. It felt like a lot of gorgonzola. That's why I didn't put it all in. Yeah, yeah. The recipe is a half a pound of gorgonzola. We just made this last week again, so. I yeah. like the idea of mixing it in, but then giving more on the side yep. so that when you like fix yourself a plate of it, yep. you can add even more yep. um, if you want to. Yeah, that's a good idea. And this is, I mean, you've been making this pasta salad for as long as I've known you. This is the first deli I worked at. This was the most popular mm -hmm. salad they made. More popular than, and they made about 30 pasta salads. This deli was huge. Mm -hmm. They had so much stuff. And this one was a, was a constant seller. They were always making the amount of spinach they were going through, and they were using they weren't using baby spinach. I mean, this was like this was like 1995, so 96, 95 was like before baby spinach was even used too much in mm -hmm. recipes. Uh, seriously, I'm surprised they weren't using frozen spinach. Yeah, they then. weren't using frozen, but yeah. yeah, yeah. So we would always in the back be pulling off the big stems from the spinach. Yeah, but no, I really like that and. I'm a big fan. Yeah. So this has salami, right? All the good Gen stuff. Like Genoa salami. Yep. Right? right? The mozzarella balls from Costco. The Galvani, those were Galvani mozzarella balls. I didn't tell you guys in the beginning of the video. Mmm. That's an, if you can find that deal in Costco, they were selling, I think it was a two and a half pound container of those mozzarella balls for eight bucks. Some crazy price. Okay, so this also has capers. Right? And olives. Yep. All right. This is really good. This one is like tangier yep. than this one, but this one has that bite from the gorgonzola. So. They're the same dressing. Just this dressing has pecorino. Oh, this doesn't. Okay. Yep. I would have thought same that dressing. maybe the dressings were different. Okay. Um, so what do you want me to do? Do you want me to like- Well, which one do you think, which one do, would you recommend or, or just tell people what, what you think? I would recommend both of them. Yeah. They're both really good they're both really different like you can never have too many pasta salad varieties for sure but i am still as this one's outstanding yeah i am still biased towards this one just me because too. i like the greens and the gorgonzola like that for me, me is too. just yeah i mean to be honest with you i'm biased towards this one as well but i recommend you make both of them Thanks for watching. This is prob this video is probably being released on Memorial Day. I hope you have a great Memorial Day weekend, and we'll see you next time. Mm.